In today's video, we're gonna be talking about five players that I think are poised for breakout seasons this upcoming season. Before we get into the video, be sure to destroy the like button so that all of these players have breakout seasons this year. They will definitely do it if you slam the like button. I'm only going to ask you to do one more thing. Be sure to leave video suggestions down below in the comments because I've been struggling to come up with new ideas. Training camp isn't for another month, so I have a pretty quiet period coming up. Leave those suggestions down below and I'll be using those for my videos. Let's get straight into it. Number five, Josh Uche. And this is a player that didn't really get a lot of playing time last season. He came out of Michigan and we knew he would be a pass rusher specialist. And I've been hearing that in minicamp, he was standing out as a great pass rusher there for our defense, which was lights out the whole time. They were giving a lot of the offensive players some problems when they were going head to head. I hope that we hear a lot of the same in the preseason, obviously training camp, all of those things coming up. I'm really, really excited to see what a lot of these players have in store. Josh Uche is number five because we haven't really gotten to see him play a lot at all. It should be pretty easy for him to have a breakout season because going from no stats to quite a bit of some good stats would be pretty good. He doesn't have to have like 12 sacks or anything for it to be considered a breakout season. Him having decent stats, I would say, would be a great step up from nothing, and I would consider that a breakout year for him. Number four is a familiar face, Trent Brown. We brought him in this year. We traded for him. He was with the Patriots back in 2018 when we went on that Super Bowl run, had a great running offense. That just happened to be debatably, but I really think it's, it, I'm quite confident that that is the best year in his entire career uh, when he played for us. That was his best season. He went to the Raiders and he had a pretty good season after that. Not quite as good as the year he had with the Patriots. So that was 2019. And then in 2020, it dropped off quite a bit as well. I do expect that returning to the Patriots, it should be a similar situation to when we brought him in in 2018. I expect him to flourish with our offense. He has stronger pieces around him, uh, the two tight ends now that are going to be good at blocking. And then also the rest of the offensive line is really awesome for us as well. I think he should have an easy time just staying in his lane and just blocking who he needs to block. I really think it's going to help him step up his game again like he did in 2018 this year again. So I'm watching for him to have a breakout season this year. Number three is Kyle Duggar. Now he is a safety for us that we drafted last season in the second round and he had a good season last year. He had no fumbles or interceptions but he did happen to have one tackle for a loss and then 64 combined tackles. So he had a kind of productive season. He only played in 14 games and he only started in seven so every other game out of the 14. So about half of his games were actually more situational. He wasn't just on the field all the time. I expect that with the departure of Patrick Chung this season, this is going to give Kyle Duggar a lot more playing time. And I do expect him to handle that quite, quite well because when he was on the field, he was a very intelligent player. He was a difference maker as a tackler, just a sure tackler. Plays a lot more like a linebacker, but with a little bit more speed and coverage ability. So perfect for that strong safety position. I do expect Kyle Duggar actually to take... Uh, potentially take that starting job as the strong safety like that Patrick Chung role I really really do expect that I think he's the perfect player might even be a better player for that position than Patrick Chung was just because of pure athleticism and size he's 6'1 217 pounds uh, I really think he could be really really good in that position the next player on our list number two Damian Harris okay and Damian Harris did have a good season last season his rookie year in 2019, he didn't really get to play too much. Uh, he only played in two games, and he got to rush four times for 12 yards. So that was like a tiny sample size. In 2020, he got a lot more of a starting role. In 10 games, he was the starter. He only played in 10 games. So every single game he played in, he was the starter. It was kind of like we kept him a secret. I feel like we always knew he was really good. And by we, I don't mean me. I mean the coaching staff. You know how it is. He had 691 yards last season, but only two touchdowns. So that does leave room for a breakout season. I wouldn't call last year necessarily a huge breakout season. He did average for five yards per attempt, which is really good. I do expect to see that number stay pretty similar. I think the yards per game will stay pretty similar. Around 69, maybe we can increase that to around 80 or 90 because it's pretty close to 70 anyway. But I would like to see more touchdowns from him. Maybe four plus, maybe five or more would be really nice from him. I think this, I, I would like to see him get that starting role at the running back position. And if that is the case in all 16 or sorry, 17 games this season, I think he should really flourish in that more increased playing time 
Uh, I really expect big things from Damian Harris this upcoming season. Now, number one might shock a lot of people, Cam Newton. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that one. A lot of people even have suggested that I don't like Cam Newton, that I really just hate him, uh, and I like Mac Jones. Am I not allowed to like Mac Jones and Cam Newton? Is that, like, not a thing? I feel like people have not allowed for people to feel like Cam Newton's really good, but also Mac Jones is a really nice, developmental, young quarterback. Why does it have to be night and day? Like, why do you have to either feel like Cam Newton sucks or you have to feel like Mac Jones sucks? I think... Mac Jones is a great prospect, and I think he one day will be a really good quarterback. Cam Newton, I think, can have a really good year this year. I really feel like he will. And and the reasons, I have so many reasons for that. First off, I wanted to mention one thing. So last season, he started in 15 games. There was one game that he missed because of COVID. Health-wise, he had a really good year, in my opinion. I, I don't think he struggled too much with any health concerns last year outside of the COVID, but that's how, you know, it's not an injury. That's not his body's fault. Now, he had 10 interceptions and 8 touchdowns, so at the initial glance, you might feel like that's a lot of interceptions, but it's actually not. 10 interceptions is fine, and out of his career, that's tied for the least amount, and he had the same amount in 2015. Uh, That was the year that he went to the Pro Bowl and the Super Bowl, so that was his, like, MVP. Also, he was the MVP, so that was his MVP year, uh, and he threw 10 interceptions. Same story last year, so as far as holding on to the ball and just protecting it, he did a nice job. Uh, and other people might be concerned about the fumbles as well. Uh, the the fumbles, it, I'm not too concerned about that either because last season, you know, it was six. So that is quite a bit. Uh, but there was some other seasons like in, in 2014 where he had 12. And in his MVP year, he had five. So he only had one more than in his MVP season. So I don't feel like that's too much. I feel like the problem here is actually the lack of touchdown passes. Uh, so you see eight. That's the least of his career out of a starting season by far. Uh, that's that's not a lot at all. The, the other one, the next least amount that he had was in 2014, and he had 18. So we're, we're looking at 10 less than that season last season. I expect that with a full offseason, because he didn't have an offseason, and he didn't have a, a preseason at all. So he was kind of just thrown into the position, like regular season, when it matters. I feel like with the full offseason, with preseason, with the competition with Mac Jones, with Jarrett Stidham, uh, just being around those quarterbacks, and also Brian Hoyer being here uh, to be able to help teach Cam Newton about the system, because whether Hoyer is a good quarterback or not, he does know things about the system, so he can, he can help with certain things. Uh, I do expect Cam Newton to take a considerable jump in the passing game. We can only hope that he keeps similar rushing numbers, because he had 592 rushing yards and 12 rushing touchdowns, and he had... That's the second most in his career. I just wanted to mention that too. Uh, 12 is the second most rushing touchdowns he's ever had in his career. 14 in 2011, his rookie year, uh, was the only year he had more. 592 yards is up there with some of his top years. I think he could do even better. But if we can get him to have a similar rushing season, but also maybe throw more like, you know, in the range of 20 touchdowns instead of eight. And with the new tight ends, with the new wide receivers, and with a better defense just kind of having his back on the other side of the game, I really feel like Cam Newton should take a big jump in the passing game this upcoming season. I do expect him to start the entire season, by the way, might I add. And if he doesn't, I think it'll be Jarrett Stidham, not Mac Jones, because I think they need to work on keeping Mac Jones off the field the entire season and just let him develop. I've mentioned that in another video as well. You might have seen that one. I expect big, big, big things from Cam Newton, if you haven't noticed. I've been going on and on about it. So let's move on to the honorable mentions, and these are guys that just narrowly missed the list, and I'm going to give you my reasons why. Now, this is in no particular order, because I have a really good reason for why each of these players missed the list. First off, Jacoby Myers, the reason he's not on the list is because last year was his breakout season. He had 729 yards. He didn't have any touchdowns, so that's the interesting thing. I feel like he could improve there, but it was such a good season with the yards and being the number one wide receiver. I don't see any way he can make a very considerable jump from where he was. We can't expect him to have, you know, 1,400 yards or anything like that. So he can't really just go far and beyond what it was last season. So that's my reason for why he's not on the breakout players list. Our next one down the list is going to be Christian Barmore. I thought about putting him on the list, but then I thought about it. How can a rookie have a breakout season when they haven't even had a season in the NFL yet? So that's the reason he's not on the list. 
Dante Hightower opted out last year, but he's been such a good player throughout his career. I don't really see how he can be better than he ever was or anything like that. So I don't think he's waiting on a breakout year. I think we have expectations of what we're going to get out of him. And it's not going to be shocking if he has a great season this year. So that's my reason for him not being on the list. Our next one is Jonathan Jones. Obviously, if Stephon Gilmore does not play for the Patriots next season, he might get a little bit more playing time. I feel like Jonathan Jones has been consistently good for us, and I wouldn't really see him playing that number two cornerback role, even if Stephon Gilmore is a departure. I feel like Jonathan Jones plays so good as that slot cornerback or even uh, just going up against the speediest wide receiver. I think he's a great situational defensive back on our team, and I don't really see him playing uh, any different role, whether Stephon Gilmore leaves or if Stephon Gilmore stays. So that was just one that I knew might get asked about. And then our final one here is going to be Nikhil Harry. And the reason he's not on the list is because I just don't think he'll do it. Uh, <laughs> just to be straight up with you guys, he did improve substantially last season. I will say that from 2020, his rookie year, only having 100 yards. Uh, he did have two touchdowns, which was for the yardage really good. And then his sophomore season, which was last season, he was 23 years old. He basically took those numbers and tripled it, except for the touchdowns, basically just the yards. He had 309 yards, uh, two touchdowns again. He played in some more games for sure. So I think with the additional playing time, I mean, with the amount of playing time he had, he played in 14 games and only had 300 yards. I really, really want to see him improve, but I just don't know if he will ever be a really good player in the NFL. I don't know. I think he could. I just don't think he will. I could expect to see him get more closer to maybe 500 yards this upcoming season, but when you spend a first round pick on a wide receiver, you're you're expecting them to be your number one wide receiver. I don't care what anybody says. I think that with his play style, with his size, with his talents, we were expecting him to be the number one wide receiver on our team for years to come, and that just does not seem likely at this point. So that's why he's not making the list. I don't see a big jump happening with him. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you agree. Let me know how you would rank your top five. Like, give me your top five in the comments down below because all of the comments help that YouTube algorithm out so much. Be sure to also destroy the like button because that helps a lot too with that YouTube algorithm as I'm trying to grow this channel. And also just be sure to subscribe if you like the Patriots, if you like football, or if you like me. I don't really care. Just subscribe because you want to see our future videos. I know you do because you've been watching for 12 minutes so far. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow.